You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You walk in the Abrahamic blessing. You have the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and he adds no sorrow with it. You've also been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You've been given everything you need for life and for godliness. You've been given divine health, divine victory. You've been given the faith. Jesus Christ himself is your faith. Like honestly, you lack nothing. You live in divine health, but the body will tell you, oh, you know, I think I did something to my back or oh you know at my age you can expect a few creaks and groans and moans and all that kind of stuff that's all rubbish because the lord renews your youth that's the truth I tell my body, uh, 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 no old age aches and cracks for you, babe, because the Lord is renewing your youth. I wait upon the Lord and he strengthens me. You've got to come back with the truth. In this, and the truth comes. When it becomes revelation, that's when it's released from the pit of your belly with an anointing upon it that destroys everything that comes against you. Sometimes you've been meditating on the word of God, but it's still a memory thing. It, you've changed. You, it's, it's here, but it's not here. But when it comes out of your belly, when it comes out with those rivers of living water, when it comes out with that two-edged sword, when it comes out with that, that's when the enemy runs because that's the power of the anointing that destroys what comes against you. It's not when it comes out of your head. It's not when it comes out of your thoughts. It's when it comes out of that belly. Out of your belly flows rivers of living water, rivers of living water, not trickles, not little drips and pieces, but rivers of living water. So whatever it is that's dammed up that river of, on the inside of you, whether it's an offense, whether it's a con condemnation whatever it might be get rid of the stones that are, are blocking those rivers from flowing because out of your belly flows rivers of living water rivers of living water rivers of living water it flows everywhere it flows out of you it flows into the situations you enter into it flows into the people that come with you it touches people as you go but sometimes we block it up because we think well who am I and what's God going to do when I'm a bit worried about this? And so we've got these stones, these things that block the rivers. We dam it up with negative emotions. We dam it up with lies that we believe. We dam it up. And God is saying, get rid of that now in Jesus' name. Come back to the truth of who you are in Christ. Come back to who you are in Christ. Come back to the victory that he's already given you. Come back to the divine health that he's given you. Come back to the divine prosperity prosperity that he's laid upon you he destroyed poverty at the cross sickness and disease and death were destroyed at the cross the power of the curse destroyed at the cross come on you are redeemed separated set apart sanctified set on high set on high why should you come down and entertain the thoughts of the enemy? Why should you step down? Why should you abdicate your place? You don't leave the place. You're seated with him in heavenly places. And we carry a lot of junk from the past. Can I just say that? We carry a heap of junk. You know, when you go on a travel, like my, my biggest problem is I'm not into clothes, but I love books. <laughs> so if I travel, I think, well, I need this book. Oh, maybe I've got time to read that book. And I think, oh, makeup, clothes, oh, oh. So I have a challenge, right? But the airline has a very strict policy. No excess baggage. No excess baggage. And if there is excess baggage, well, you can either take it out and leave it at the airport, or you can pay for it. I remember years ago, one of the churches I was at, there was a young guy who was going to Russia um, for a trip. But he wasn't too sure what he was going to find over there. So, and he had all these big suitcases going to Russia and the, the airline said, um, excess baggage, you're going to have to, you can't take all that. Like, 
we have strict, you know, it affects the fuel consumption, it affects everything. So we've got strict, strict things on what you can take. Here. So in the middle of the airport in Brisbane, he is unpacking his suitcase of tins and tins of food, just in case there wasn't enough food in Russia. But, you know, we laugh at that and we laugh about, well, what are we going to do with it? No, we're left with the tins at the airport. He did come back with a wife. <laughs> but the question is, what excess baggage are we trying to take on your walk with Jesus? What excess baggage? that he's, you know, it's not going to do you any good. It's going to slow you down. It's going to be a bondage. It's going to cause heartache. What excess baggage are you actually taking on your trip with Jesus? And for a lot of us, like, you know, we've been Christian for a long time. So it's not like we're going out partying, nightclubs, guys or girls or where, anything, or drinking, hopefully. But for a lot of us, there's disappointment, disillusionment, shipwrecked faith, places where we think that we really heard God but it didn't come through. So I believe in God and I believe his promises, but can I really trust him? There's father issues. There's rejection. There's the feeling that I just can't seem to find my place. I always seem to be overlooked. Sometimes we get feelings like, I've just got to fight for every single thing I've got, not realizing that you don't have to fight at all because Jesus did it for us. We've got to learn to receive. But what are we taking? that is excess baggage. Sometimes it's just a lousy attitude. But we're meant to be light in the spirit, light in the world, light in the spirit. So there's an opportunity here today To get rid of your excess baggage. Whatever it is. Even just going to the birthday party last night, I had a negative attitude. I didn't want to go to a theme party. Well, hey. I didn't want to have to stand around and be nice to people I didn't know. Lousy attitude. And so when we shifted, I say the royal we, <laughs> Danny's, Danny's gorgeous, I'm the one with the problems. <laughs> but when, we when we shifted our attitude and asked Jesus to go to the party with us, it was amazing the interaction we had with people, um, people asking us to pray for them and, you know, like Hindus and, and we said, would you pray? Just amazing it was, it was wonderful. But I had to dump the excess baggage or I wouldn't have walked away with any of those blessings. I, yes, last night with the wrong attitude, I'm not sure if I'd even have made it into the 70. <laughs> I might have been in the, on the peripherals of the crowd. <laughs> Jesus saying, I really can't use her tonight. <laughs> but the thing is, you are so much more precious and wonderful than you're aware of.